Such an awesome wicked waterfall. This is a pretty decent day. It's kind of wispy with some blue skies. It looks like I may not get rain on today, so that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty sore today. Um, one thing about uh, my North Boundary Fire Road hike, though, is that I know I can handle this kind of soreness. I can get out. I already got my food down. There's not a lot of point hanging out here. I really would love a picnic table, of course. I don't have one. So I think I might just have a couple of snacks and then walk to uh, second, you know, the uh, second Geraldine Lake where the campground is. And, and then I'll sit down at that picnic table and have some oatmeal and stuff. I'm being completely swarmed by mosquitoes too. No surprises. That's why the camera's shaking is because I'm hitting them off my hands. All right. Well, it takes uh, a lot longer to get packed up without a picnic table. It's five after 11. I got off about quarter after 10, which I spent 12 hours in the bag. That was no surprise. Yeah, there's basically nowhere to sit. Put your shoes on and everything, mind you. I went over one of those big rocks, but it really is a beautiful spot. Like, man, and very few people stay here. Those falls up there, I have footage of them from my first time here. One of the things I did was I climbed up beside those falls before I found the path that went to nothing and followed it in both directions. This is above Fort Geraldine Lake. There's no path up here. I found my way up to this. That is Fort Geraldine Lake. Here's me. Oh, you can see I'm just on a hillside. And I mean, there's another one over there. There's just falls everywhere up here. There's just the Valley of Falls. All right, well, first thing I gotta do is the very nicest part of my day, and that is walk around the lake. It's nice and flat, and I know that it is the least rugged part of my day. It is a perfect way to warm up my legs, I gotta say. No, I'm not around the lake yet, but I feel like this might be my last great shot of it as I walk into the bush. I just started over there, so. You can see Fry quite nicely today. A nice shot right there. That's where I was before. Just down on these rocks is where I had gone all those few years ago. A lot of pride. Feeling a lot of pride right now because the thought of going all the way around this circuit was an absolute pipe dream back then. And now here I am. I'm coming back the other way. awesome so beautiful out here and it's already a beautiful day I'm gonna have to shed my jacket one last shot here's the outlet here it's beautiful if you're staying at second Geraldine Lake at the campground and even if you're just staying an overnight it is worth taking a day trip up here it's not very far and it's just beautiful Right, you can walk around the lake, it's perfect hiking. Yeah, I think you have lots of time to get back and backpack out.
So there is a third lake and there is a trail camera. So even though the uh, parks aren't maintaining out here, they are still coming out here and putting up their cameras. That means they're gonna have to uh, come out and get the memory card too. Yeah, at least someone still comes out here. Maybe they clear a couple of things out of the way while they're at it. Third lake. The views haven't changed too much. And it's only like a, when you get to fourth lake, the end of it anyway, it's like 10 minutes to get here, so. And obviously it's not as big. There's third lake and a great shot of Mount Fryat. You see we have a little marker indicating that this is where you gotta cross. So this one, you can rock hop, but you're risking slipping off and getting your feet completely soaked or maybe worse, maybe you fall over. Or you can take, uh, which is what I might do, I might put on the uh, sandals, Crocs, and just cross that way. Because that's actually pretty decent little crossing, pretty easy with Crocs. All right, I got my nasty smelly boots around my neck, which is always awesome. Got my Crocs on, all right. Got my pants rolled up as best I can. I've got the socks stuffed in my boots as far as they'll go. Let's go cross. There we go. I even managed to keep my pants hiked up. I had to stop a few times. So the bottoms of those are dry. And uh, I think I care a lot more about that because if they're wet, then they're gonna drip down on my boots for the next hour and a half. All right, well, pretty sure up here there's a pretty decent place to change my shoes out, so yeah. Here we go, so it's a nice little clearing. If you want, you can, uh, you know, go check out Third Lake, or I think there's even a trail just to see some of the better rapids. And it, anyway, I'm just interested in changing my shoes. All right, I'm all changed out. So down here, there's actually, like I walked down about 10 feet. That's actually the outlet falls out of Third Lake. And you know, I imagine they're pretty cool and stuff, but you gotta do the work. There's not really a trail, so I think you're kind of rock hopping and heading down to see those. So hey, if that's part of your day hike, great. You just wanna come to Third Lake, see this, see those falls, and then keep going. But I know that, very, that ahead, well, first of all, I've seen like 15 falls already uh, ahead underneath second Geraldine Lake is some amazing falls. So, you know, I'm good. Let me get a few shots of the Cascade Falls as you walk along. Now that I've left Third Lake, the party's over. It is basically a rugged, rugged trail for the next, God, I don't know, eight, eight and a half kilometers until they get to the fire road that goes down to my car. Oh, until I get to the Geraldine Lakes Trailhead. It's all like this, it's not too tended. There's evidence that people have cut things, but there's also, yeah. yeah. Not bad. So I've been telling you guys to come down here, but you know what? It's actually pretty, down here you need some route finding skills. So I just finished walking up here. There's a look trodden down. It's been trodden down by animals, I'm sure. I got down there, there's nothing. Then it's like, oh, wait a sec. Look at the big clear marker over here. So, I mean, this looks like crap, but this is where you go, right? This is, is going to be the semblance of a trail here. So, it is a little tricky, not going to lie. All right, so I got this and I got that. And I got a big old footprint. So that's my clue. It's not a maintained trail, right? This is not a parks trail by any means, so. There's part of the Cascade coming out of Third Lake. Not bad. One rule on this is if you ever do actually get lost, just follow this and it'll go to Second Lake. 
Right now, it's actually a pretty good, good trail, now that I've found it again. It just gets faint in a lot of different places, right? Oh, it is such a beautiful day. Okay, so this is where I just came from. You're going through all these willows, you have a track on the ground that you're following. And you're just barreling through willows, like lots of willows. But you just gotta follow that track. Now I have to continue on. There is some rock hopping here and people have been very good about, you know, they put Cairn here, Cairn. I can even see the big Cairn over there. So that's what I gotta do. So what's not helpful is when you got one here, there's even a backup one, and you got one over here. And I did see trail in there. And I think that's the trail there. So probably either one's gonna work. I'm not sure why you have two trails marked. Anyway, I'm gonna go bashing through the wheels again. So just so you know, I went the way the second with the two cairns and it was fine, I pretty much met up with the other trail. Here's another rock hop, and let me tell you, these will not be the last rock hops because there is some major slides I have to cross on the way out today. But uh, here's another one, big, sharp, nasty looking rocks too. And you can see that once upon a time there was a hell of an avalanche in here, probably at least hundreds of years ago, if not thousands, but uh, yeah. And look at this, look at all this white. It's got to be its own little unique microclimate here. There's probably some organisms that live in here that you'd never find. You, know, you find only a few places. Anyway, you can see my two Cairns. That's where I got to go. So I found my way off here with this and this. But it gets a little confusing here, right? So straight ahead, you got this nice, looks like a nice little trail going into the woods. And yet there are cairns leading you all the way down there, which is the way I came. I'm not sure if that'll work or not, but it looks like a trail. Anyway, it can get a little confusing, right? That's my point. Okay, fashion through the woods again. Not bad. That'd be an interesting one to climb. Be a heck of a lot of rock hopping though. It'd be hard going. That one over there is pretty awesome. I'll have a better shot of that at some point. Well, I rock hopped a little bit again. And this is where you get into second Geraldine Lake, the uh, Geraldine campsite. They make it really damned obvious. That is so cool. All right. By the time you get down here, obviously, this creek is a little too much. I could cross it, but with my Crocs, but uh, yeah, appreciate a good bridge. just for good measure. There we go. Walk into the campsite. Well, no signs of life yet. Nothing in the bear hangs. So whoever was all booked last night, and I, I think it was fully booked, they're all gone. These are interesting too. These are metal. Metal stuck into the ground. These are, the, these are just made out of huge logs. Anyway, you can see it's a nice place to have some lunch, and I'm actually going to have my oatmeal. Well, two years ago I was here, this was a meditation circle, but now it's been converted into a happy face. This is a pretty popular spot. It's uh, 
Geraldine Lakes. And you can see some of the spots are right on the second lake. And second lake is beautiful. It's, I mean, they're all beautiful. How can you not be when you're out here? Like my Lord. Well, had a nice long stay here. In retrospect, I'm quite glad I didn't uh, come here last night because it might not be real long, but it's very rugged and it's very mentally challenging. So it's just past two o'clock. I'm moving slow. But I have to make sure, you know, I've planted my foot properly on every step because my ankles, my legs are so tired. I don't want to jar a knee or anything. So anyway, time to start. The first thing I'm doing is a massive, massive rock slide. Standing on the bridge. So the rocks start right here. They go all along, all along there. You get a reprieve for a little while. And then down there, you get another massive rock crossing. So getting around this lake is a lot of work. The art of crossing landslides. I mean, you're just looking for anything flat you can step onto. And don't look up because it's depressing to see how far you have to go. So keep your head down. All right, and just go to work. Well, I finished the first rock slide and this forested part which is kind of rugged itself. Here's the next rock slide to the end of the lake. This is the trail two years ago that taught me that it's not all about kilometers. I mean, it's, uh, there's rocks and there's elevation and there's rugged and there's, it's just brutal. It's 6.3 kilometers to that campground, but it feels like 12. Oh. Anyway, these are just the first obstacles of the day. Plenty more to come, so taking a nice little break. Now well, I got that big long one done. I think last time I was here, there was actually a canoe here. Pretty cool. It's a huge lake, so why not? What I got next is a climb. I start making my way to the monster descent out of uh, Second Lake alongside of uh, I don't even know what those falls are called. Second Lake Falls. I am totally blind. I was sitting down there. There it is. Must be able to rent it or something. Okay. There's this little pool here. And uh, that's kind of alongside this big rock slide that I still have to cross. That's my last big one. And then there is First Geraldine Lake. And you gotta climb over that knoll and back down to the trailhead. More climbing. <laughs> uh, it's nice to see some new goals in sight. Took a little break there. You come from up there, you can see it's marked. And then there's this great little trail going right into the forest, which I started wandering down about 10 feet. And then realized very quickly it was closing off on me. So maybe it's Maybe it's a way to go see the falls at a different angle, but see, this is where the trail goes. So, oh, even on the maintained trail, you gotta be careful on this one. Okay, so I don't know why this one doesn't have a name. It's very steep. A name like Headwall or Leg Killer or something like that. You cross over to there and then it is just down. And climbing it, is tough. When you get to the bottom though, you can see when you get down to the, the falls, I'll have to do a little side trail to get over there, but I think that's worth it, even in my state. Got some pretty cool rock formations coming down this. And uh, in my opinion, one of the better views of the falls, because from this vantage point, you can see the sheer power of it coming down. All right. Like, man, that is awesome. It's a 
tough descent, it's a tough climb, but you sure get amazing views. Such an awesome wicked waterfall. No idea what's going on there. This is where you kind of break off and go down this little trail and go see the falls, which are, yeah, pretty outstanding. But I gotta move on with my day. I got another big rock slide to cross. It's like four o'clock, so probably like 4.30 now. I'm just slowly moseying my way down here, trying not to twist the ankles and stuff. So, gotta get back to my car at some point. Here we go. Gotta go all the way along those rocks, around this little lakelet, and then all the way across too. Amazingly, all that water goes underneath the rocks, except for this little portion, which I can't even figure out where it comes from. So, it comes out of nothing. Here, there's another one there, and there. I gotta cross over to this. Gone all the way down the lake. Somehow, all that water gets underneath here. You can't even hear it. Just goes underground somewhere. Seems like a pretty good place for a break. These go for a while. First lake, right there. Not bad, eh? Very cool stuff. How's that for a spooky looking shot? Can't replicate that. I am hiking alongside First Geraldine Lake and for a little while anyway, I have nice trail. Oh, this is fantastic. I know that once I get to the end of the lake, uh, I'm gonna start climbing and it's gonna be very, very rooty. So, Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy while I can. Well, the nice trail sure didn't last long, I'll tell you that. It's just a very demanding trail, you know? Even when you're flat beside a lake, it's uh, very rooty, in this case, muddy. And that's just how it is, you know? Wonderful rewards on this trail, wonderful waterfalls lakes, but uh, a lot of work. I am almost on the lake, so one more shot on this side before I lose it completely. Now it's been a while since I took a break, so there used to be a bench at the top of this trail. I mean, you got to climb up and then climb back down to the cars. And there used to be a nice, nice bench up there, but I am definitely a little ways in the descent now and I never saw it, so that's kind of sad. 30 more seconds of hiking, I could have used this guy. Oh well, it's not the top of the climb, it's almost up there. Yeah, you gotta, if you're going back the other way, you gotta climb up a bit more and then you gotta go through all the level section, which is full of mud and that sort of thing. Mind you, this is pretty muddy too. Okay. Well, I got that licked. Well, of course, that was longer than I thought it would be. This here is the trail up to the Geraldine Fire Lookout. Personally, I have found fire lookouts to be pretty boring. When you go out, you have a view of a valley. Well, I had that for like four days. I'm gonna take a rest and then I gotta go another three kilometers down, down that uh, fire road there, down to my car. 
Well, it's another 3.2 kilometers, but it's by far the easiest hiking I've done in like three days. Two reasons why I didn't drive my car up here and then do this easy three kilometers on day one. Considering I only had 11.6 booked for, scheduled for day one. One, my car sucks for this sort of thing. And I remember it being, I remember it being a little difficult to get up here. So if I got my car stuck, that would have been a disastrous way to start my five days, right? Two, uh, that would have put extra pressure on me to make it around the loop. And I mean, I already had plenty of my own pressure going on, so, but I didn't need even more. So, I mean, if I come up here and then I went back, you know, then I would have to, you know, I've got the, this three kilometer uphill hike in the back of my mind. So I didn't want that. So I get to do it now. Wow, there's 12 cars here. 13 if you count mine, which I'm always happy to say is unmolested. Oh, getting bits. Oh, I'm so happy to be back. Well, I gotta say, I was pretty much out of gas for today's hike. Yesterday took it out of me hard. Uh, it was fun though, it took me a long time. I'm not even gonna say how long. Uh, now I have a four and a half hour drive back to Calgary. Uh, that's pretty crazy though, I don't even know, you know. Right now the pain is here. I got pain in my back. I just walked straight from the Geraldine trailhead to here and uh, just ignored what was happening in my back. So yeah, I'm pretty wasted. But uh, you know, get out there and hike because that was an amazing trip. I think maybe I took too many risks, but you know, it's uh, sometimes that's the fun of it in some ways, right? All right, later.